where do the Danish people really come from? For centuries, this question has fascinated historians, puzzled archaeologists, and sparked endless debates across Scandinavia and Europe. Most people assume they already know the answer. They imagine Denmark as the heartland of the Vikings, fierce warriors, brilliant sailors, and the founders of Norse power across the North Atlantic. In the popular imagination, Danes are the pure descendants of these legendary seafarers, strong, tall, blonde, blue-eyed, the classic Nordic image. But the truth, revealed by genetics, is far stranger and far more shocking than anything in the history books. Recent DNA studies have uncovered a story that no one expected, a story that stretches across thousands of years, across entire continents, and across civilizations that most people would never associate with Denmark. Everything we thought we knew about Danish origins, when they formed, who shaped them, and what bloodlines built the country has been turned upside down. What scientists discovered is nothing less than a plot twist in the story of Northern Europe. And in this video, we're going to unravel that mystery layer by layer. Because Denmark was never the isolated Viking kingdom people imagine. It was a crossroads, a magnet for migrations, a place where cultures collided, mixed and transformed long before the first longship was ever carved from oak. The Danish identity is not the product of one tribe, one era, or one ancient people. It is the result of epic migrations, vanished civilizations, lost cultures, and surprising ancestors who came to this small Scandinavian land from some of the most unexpected regions on Earth. So stay with me until the end, because what we are about to explore will change everything you thought you knew about Denmark. But before we dive into this genetic maze, let me ask you a question. Do you think modern Danes are mostly Viking in origin? Let me know your answer in the comments, but be warned, by the time we finish this journey, whatever answer you had in mind might look very different. Long before Denmark had kings, long before rune stones were carved or Viking ships ruled the seas, this land was home to people whose identities have almost completely vanished. These groups lived here thousands of years before the word Denmark even existed, and their DNA continues to live inside modern Danes in ways that scientists only recently began to understand. The earliest major chapter of Denmark's genetic story begins at the end of the Ice Age, around 12,000 years ago, when the glaciers finally retreated and the land warmed enough for humans to survive. The earliest settlers were Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, small groups of dark-haired, dark-eyed people who lived off the coasts, forests, and wetlands, thriving on fish, seals, and wild game. These were not farmers. They were not warriors. They were survivors of a frozen world, experts at reading the tides, the seasons, and the natural world. For a long time, archaeologists believed these hunter-gatherers had little impact on modern DNA, but recent genetic testing revealed something unexpected, a surprisingly strong layer of ancient Scandinavian hunter-gatherer ancestry still present in modern Danes, especially in people from rural areas or from the islands, places where gene flow remained stable for thousands of years. These ancient peoples were genetically unique. They had a mix found nowhere else in Europe, connecting them partly to Western hunter-gatherers and partly to Eastern ones. They carried traits adapted to low sunlight, harsh winters, and coastal living. And although they left no written records, their genetic fingerprints remain woven into the Danish population to this very day. But the real shock came when researchers analyzed skeletons from the Erdebol culture, a group of advanced hunter-gatherers who lived in Denmark around 7,000 years ago. These people were not primitive. They built dugout canoes, created decorative pottery before their neighbors did, and harvested the sea with incredible skill. Their DNA revealed something strange. They were genetically distinct from the early farmers who would later arrive. So distinct, in fact, that when the farmers arrived from the south, the two groups barely mixed at first. This is one of the greatest turning points in Denmark's early past. Around 6,000 years ago, new people entered the region, farmers from the Near East 
who had slowly migrated across Europe, carrying wheat, livestock, and a completely new lifestyle. They belonged to the same broad population that helped shape the first European farming societies. When they reached Denmark, everything changed. Forests were cleared, villages were built, entire ways of life shifted from hunting to agriculture. But here's the fascinating part. Denmark became one of the most intense collision zones between hunters and farmers in all of Europe. Their DNA did not blend overnight. For centuries, the two populations lived side by side with remarkably little mixing. Scientists found farmer graves and hunter graves existing within the same landscape, yet belonging to genetically separate communities. It was almost like two worlds existing at once. And then something happened, something dramatic. The hunter-gatherers vanished. No one knows exactly why. Was it disease? Climate change? A slow cultural takeover? Or did one group absorb the other? What we do know from DNA is that the early farmers eventually replaced most of the hunter ancestry. Not all of it, but a huge portion. This disappearance is one of Denmark's greatest prehistoric mysteries. A mystery written in bones, but still lacking a final explanation. But even this wasn't the biggest plot twist. Because just when the early farmers became dominant, a new force swept in from the east a force that would rewrite the genetic map of Denmark forever and shape the identity of the people who would eventually become Danes. And that's where the story takes its most dramatic turn yet. Around 4,800 to 4,500 years ago, Denmark experienced one of the most dramatic population shifts in all of European history. It wasn't slow, it wasn't peaceful, and it wasn't subtle. It was a genetic shockwave, so powerful that it replaced almost the entire population of early farmers in just a few centuries. The people responsible for this seismic change were the newcomers from the Eastern European steppe, part of the broader corded ware horizon. In Denmark, archaeologists call them the single grave culture, but genetically they belong to the same world as the Yamnaya, and the Indo-European steppe tribes, groups whose migrations reshaped Europe from the Atlantic all the way to India. These were not just settlers, they were a completely different kind of people. Taller, lighter, more mobile, more warlike, skilled with horses, connected through vast trade and migration networks stretching thousands of miles. They carried a new language family, a new social structure, and above all, a new genetic signature that scientists can easily identify today. When their DNA was first compared to that of earlier Danish farmers, the results shocked researchers. Almost 70 to 80 percent of Denmark's genetic population was replaced in a single era. This is one of the fastest, most complete population turnovers ever recorded in ancient Europe. But the real twist lies in what this meant for the future of Denmark. The single grave culture brought three things that transformed Danish identity forever. First, they introduced the Indo-European languages, the deep linguistic ancestors of Danish, Swedish, Norwegian, German, and English. Before these migrants, Denmark did not speak a Germanic language. That entire linguistic shift traces back to these steppe newcomers. Second, they brought new burial traditions, individual graves marked by mounds, often with battle axes and weapons. These grave mounds still dot the Danish countryside today. Each one represents a direct imprint of these ancient newcomers. Third, they carried a genetic lineage that would become overwhelmingly dominant in Scandinavia. Their Y chromosome lines, particularly haplogroup R1A and R1B, spread rapidly and remain common in Denmark even now. To put it simply, without the arrival of these Indo-European steppe people, the modern Danish population, genetically, culturally, and linguistically, would not exist. But the story doesn't stop there.
because while many believed the Vikings were the defining ancestors of the Danes, the truth is that the Viking Age was built on the foundations laid by these earlier steppe migrants. The same steppe ancestry that entered Denmark 4,500 years ago later appears in the DNA of Viking skeletons. It is one of the threads connecting ancient steppe warriors to the Norse seafarers thousands of years later. Still, Denmark's genetic story gets stranger. After the single grave culture dominated the land, a new surprising development emerged, a society that would become one of the richest, most complex, and most globally connected of the Bronze Age. Most people don't realize this, but during the Bronze Age, roughly 3,500 to 2,800 years ago, Denmark wasn't a remote northern corner of Europe. It was a major hub, a civilization built on trade, metallurgy, and a complex spiritual world that connected it to places far beyond Scandinavia. And the genetics from this era reveal something almost unbelievable. The Bronze Age Danes were not isolated northerners. They were part of a vast cultural and population network stretching deep into Central Europe and, shockingly, carrying ancestry that links all the way back to the ancient Near East. This is where the story takes another plot twist. When scientists sequenced the DNA of Bronze Age individuals from Denmark, especially from sites like Borum Eshoy and Ektvegd, they found unexpected markers. These people had strong steppe ancestry from the earlier single grave migrants, yes, but they also showed traits and influences tied to European populations connected to long-distance trade routes, routes that carried bronze, amber, tin, gold, and ideas across thousands of kilometers. Denmark, believe it or not, became one of Europe's largest exporters of amber. This Nordic gold was so valuable that it reached Greece, Italy, the Balkans, and even the Middle East. These trade networks didn't just move objects, they moved people, and those people left their genetic footprints. The Bronze Age Danes were a mix of local steppe-descended populations, Central European metal workers and traders, and possibly individuals connected to far southern networks. This wasn't a simple society. It was multinational, multilingual, multicultural, and thousands of years older than the Viking Age. But that's not all. One of the biggest scientific surprises came from a Bronze Age girl discovered in Ektved, buried around 1370 BC. Her remains were so well preserved that scientists could analyze the isotopes in her teeth and hair, and what they discovered stunned the archaeological world. She was not from Denmark. She spent her childhood hundreds of kilometers away, likely in southern Germany or the Black Forest region, and traveled back and forth multiple times in her short life. In other words, Denmark had international mobility 3,400 years ago. This young woman, buried in one of the most iconic Danish graves, was a traveler in a globalized Bronze Age world, and her presence suggests that Denmark was part of a system far larger and interconnected than anyone ever imagined. Genetically, her story is even more interesting. She, and others like her, introduced new layers of ancestry into Denmark. These influences weren't as dramatic as the Great Steppe Migration, but they helped shape the diversity of the Danish gene pool. They added subtle markers that scientists can still detect today. The Bronze Age was Denmark's first golden era, literally and genetically. But once this period faded, a new force began to rise, a force that would bring iron, warfare, shifting alliances, and entirely new cultural identities. This next era didn't erase the Bronze Age Danes, but it transformed them, setting the stage for the future people we think of as the ancestors of the Vikings. The Iron Age was coming. 
and it would bring another unexpected twist in Denmark's genetic history, one that scientists never saw coming. As Denmark moved from the Bronze Age into the Iron Age, roughly 500 BC to 800 AD, the genetic story of the region entered a new era. This was a period of shifting identities, rising tribal groups, and deep cultural transformations. But what scientists discovered from this era's DNA shocked everyone, because the Iron Age Danes were not as Nordic as people once believed. Their ancestry revealed layers of migration, mixing, and foreign influence that completely rewrote the traditional narrative. The Iron Age marks the moment when Denmark begins to look more like the Denmark we think of today. Not because the people were identical to modern Danes, far from it, but because this is when the foundations of the later Viking societies began to form. Yet genetically, something unexpected happened. When researchers studied Iron Age skeletons from Jutland in Zealand, they found a surprising continuity with the earlier Bronze Age populations. In other words, the massive steppe ancestry that arrived during the single grave era was still dominant. The people living in Iron Age Denmark were overwhelmingly descended from those Indo-European migrants, but shaped through centuries of interaction with Central Europe. However, what startled scientists was the amount of Southern European and Continental European ancestry flowing into Denmark during this period. Iron Age Danes showed genetic signals from Celtic regions, markers from dramatic populations in Central Europe, traces connected to Roman frontier zones, and even hints of Southeastern European ancestry. This means Denmark, even before the Viking Age, was absorbing people from across the continent. Why? Because Denmark, during the Iron Age, sat at the crossroads of enormous cultural systems. It was part of the northern edge of the Celtic world, the early Germanic tribal regions, the trade networks of the Roman Empire, and the vast movement of tribes during the Migration Period. Contrary to the stereotype that Northern Europe was isolated, the Iron Age proves the opposite. Denmark was incredibly connected. Goods, ideas, and, most importantly, people moved in and out constantly. But the greatest plot twist came from a genetic discovery that no one expected. When scientists analyzed early Iron Age burials, they discovered individuals with ancestry that did not match the typical Northern European profile at all. Some showed influences from the Balkans, others from areas around the Carpathians, and a few even pointed to distant origins that remain a mystery. This suggests something surprising. Small groups from far outside Scandinavia entered Denmark long before the Viking Age began.